Hey guys, it's Zach from CodyMadeSimple.com and today is the long awaited part three of the zombie game series. And in this episode, what we're gonna do is create a key input class for our player so we can move around the screen. So if we run the game now, as you can see, I just changed the uh, colors a little bit from the last tutorial. So we had a green background and a black box. I just changed it to a gray background and a white box. Okay, but everything else is the same. So let's go ahead and get right into it. The first thing I'm gonna do is create a new class. And I'm gonna call this key input. Okay, so the job for the key input class is just basically to store information on what keys we're pressing. We don't wanna do anything inside of the key input class that changes the player's movement around. We can do that all in the player. So the first thing I'm gonna do is extends a key adapter and control shift O to import that. So basically what the key adapter does, and please note that the uppercase K and the uppercase A. So the key adapter has a couple different methods inside of it. We're only gonna use two and that's gonna be our key pressed and key released. So let's make those methods. So public void key pressed, and it's gonna have the parameter of key event E. And then we're gonna say public void key released key event E and control shift O to import the key event. So also note on these methods that it's a lowercase K and an uppercase P on both methods. If this was an uppercase K, it's not going to work for you. So when we add a key listener into the game, then what's happening here is this key adapter is automatically when a key is pressed going to look at these two methods. So key pressed and key released. Okay, so we wanna store information in this class. So what we're gonna do is create a Boolean array. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. So we're gonna say public Boolean, I'm gonna call it keys, and it's gonna equal a new Boolean, and it's gonna have the length of four. Okay, so basically if keys zero equals true, then it's going to be going to the right. If keys one equals true, then we're going to go to the left keys two equals true. That's going to be going up and then keys three equals true. That's going to be down. Okay. So basically if keys zero equals true, that means we're going to the right, left, up, down, etc. So let's put that into these two methods here. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new integer value. It's going to be called key and this is going to equal E dot get key code. Okay, so we can copy this, paste it down in our key released. And inside our key pressed, we just simply wanna see if we're selecting the key. So I'm gonna use the WSD keys for this game. You can use the arrow keys just as easily. So I'm gonna say if key equals equals key event dot VKD, then I simply wanna set keys zero to equal true. So I can copy this, paste it down three more times. And we can say A, W, and S. And we'll just set one, two, and three. Okay, so keys one left. We have the A key, it's setting key one to true. So I'll copy this and put it in the released as well. So instead of true, we'll just say false. Okay. So very basic. So now we're just pretty much just taking in data. And now we can also note it that this is a public Boolean. And that's important because we're gonna be using this uh, array inside of our player class. Okay, so let's go into our player class now. And what we need to do is set up a couple of variables first. This is gonna be a private float underscore ACC. And this equals acceleration. Okay, and then we can say private float underscore DCC, and this is going to equal deceleration, so 0 0.5. So essentially, you're going to be accelerating when you hit a key at 1, and you're going to be decelerating at 0 0.5. I think adding acceleration and deceleration values just makes it look overall smoother, and you can play around with these numbers to whatever you'd like for your game. Okay, so I'm also going to add our private key input class that we just created. We'll say input. And here we're gonna put it inside of our constructor parameters. So key input input, and then underneath this dot input equals input. 
So you can see we're getting an error in our game class now because it needs this input. And we'll add that when we add in our key input class and we add the key listener to it. But for now in our player, in the tick method, we can go ahead and set up the code to do that. Now remember that you do need x plus equals velocity x, y plus equals velocity y. Okay, so let's get into our horizontal movement. Okay, so here I'm just gonna grab our comments right here just so we can remember what it is. Okay, so here we wanna see if, if input dot keys zero so if that equals true then we want to say velocity x plus equals our underscore acc acceleration okay then we want to say else if input dot keys one which is going to be left then velocity x minus equals our acceleration okay and then we want to decelerate so else if not input dot keys zero and not input dot keys one this essentially means that we're not selecting or not pressing on the left or the right key. We want to see if our velocity X is in the positive space or the negative space because we want to bring it back down to zero. So if velocity X is greater than zero, then our velocity X minus equals our underscore deceleration. Else, if velocity X is less than zero, then we want velocity X to plus equal our deceleration okay and that's pretty much it for our horizontal so we can copy this paste it down here and we can comment in vertical movement and this would be keys 2 is up and keys 3 is down so here we can change this to velocity y so change that here And then instead of zero, we want to be going up. So if key is two, that's going to be minus equal our acceleration. Because remember, if we're going in the negative space uh, on the vertical axes, that's always up. And then if we're going positive, that's always going down. Okay, so else if input dot keys three, then we want to plus equal our velocity. And then we want to check if we're not selecting either or. Okay, so if it's greater than zero, then we're gonna subtract. If it's less than zero, then we're gonna add. Okay, so just like that, that is the movement code for our player. So let's go into our game and let's initialize the key input class. So private key input input. And then inside of our init, we can simply say input equals new key input. And then below that, we can say this dot add key listener input. And then when we actually create our object through the handler, we need to make sure to pass through that input. Okay, so let's run the game. So as you can see, now we have some movement in the game. It's a little bit weird. Uh, it's kind of all over the place and that's because these values don't stop so if i hold the left key or the right key uh, there's no max value that this velocity x or velocity y can go in but we can simply create a clamp event and make sure that we have a max speed set for the player so let's go ahead and do that now so let's go back into the player and we can set up a really simple clamp event so i'm going to say private float uh, clamp and this is going to have three parameters. It's gonna be our value, our max, and our min. So the minimum and the maximum amount that we can go. So here I wanna say if our value is greater than max, then value equals max. Um, we could say else if value is less than or equal to min, value equals min stands for maximum and minimum, and we wanna make sure it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. And then we just wanna return our value. So that right there is a very simple clamp method that we can use. So we can put that in the tick event now. So I could say velocity x equals clamp, uh, velocity x and five and negative five. 
and we can do the same thing for velocity y. So again, this method right here, all it's doing is it's saying, hey, we're gonna max out at five and negative five in the minimum range. So if we run the game now, as you can see, we've got smoother movement now. And unlike my previous tutorials, if you mash the keys all around like that, there's zero lag to this and uh, your character's never going to get stuck. Okay, so that's it. So if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.